This show is going to be an amazing platform for drag kings across the entire world to showcase what they have and what they can bring to the stage. It's a great opportunity for kings to show that they do have what it takes to stand on stage with the best of the drag queens. So we're really excited for that opportunity and we're very grateful for you for joining us for this episode. This week on King Me, Rise of a Drag King, we challenged our remaining 11 contestants to show us their inner weird. That's anywhere from club kid to glam goth, whatever they feel they really had to dig deep and bring out that inner weird. So we're really excited to see what they bring for us this week. Unlike last week, which was a video challenge, this week's challenge is about photography. So we're really looking forward to seeing what they can show us. Without further ado, let's see what they have. Good evening and welcome to Tea Time with Savage. Um, my real name is Aria Lebron. I'm from Madison, Wisconsin. I'm 24 years old and going to be 25 in March. Um, a little about a little bit about my style is very much so based off of a lot of the things that I'm into. I'm a huge geek. Huge nerd, and I love class cosplay and stuff like that too. For the Let's Get Weird challenge, we were challenged to do a club kid look. Hashtag Let's Get Weird. Yep, that's the hashtag we're using. That was a movement from the 80s and 90s in New York. Um, Um, it's, it involved a lot of artistic, crazy fashion when you went out like that. A couple, like, popular people, like James St. James, um, RuPaul. When someone told me I looked like one, <laughs> um, at an event in town called Leather and Lace, um, that was held at a club called uh, Inferno Nightclub. Yeah, I'm actually wearing the Inferno tank top right now, actually. <laughs> so for the look, it's all about self-expression. Nasha's twin sister. If you don't know what that is, look up Blue Paul's Drag Race. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I literally sat in bed all day and made this thing <laughs> on a little wooden plank that I just laid up on and stuff like that. So it took all day and I'm super excited to be able to do the makeup to match this. Um, since I'm doing the photo shoot in bed as well, um, is kind of a play on Mr. Sandman. Whenever I think of Mr. Sandman, I think of fairies. <laughs> or I think of otherworldly-ish, but like natural creatures and stuff like that. So that's kind of what I was going for, and I was using more pastels and blues to emulate sleep. Because <laughs> that's a lot of what I've been doing. Sleeping. <laughs> 
So yeah, I'm pretty excited so to see what pops up for this. Um, so what I'm doing is, I mean normally I do a whole thing top to bottom, but I can't. So um, to give you a list of the people who've been helping me with the challenges so far, um, gotta give a shout out to William Droster who did the the photographs, the uh, the video, and the editing for the video for my um, audition tape. So. Thank you very much, dude. He's a very, very talented videographer from Madison, Wisconsin, and I look forward to working with him in the future. And for the challenge one video, this is my partner, Nate. He's also holding the camera, and he's primarily the... He's nodding. Was that a nod? I'm gonna take that as a yeah. Um, <laughs> so, he's been doing a lot of the work and editing well and uh, taking care of me so that I can heal up faster and get better for the hopeful future challenges yet to come. I'm super excited to show you guys my natural uh, bedtime realness club kid look and uh, until then, have a good night. I am Drag King Christian Gay from Buffalo, New York, and I have been performing for three years so far. The look that I'm giving you guys today um, was originally an idea that I got from a fellow drag performer by the name of Anita Waistline. She's a drag queen originally here from Buffalo, New York, but lives now in Florida. Um, she is your current reigning Miss National Comedy Queen. Um, what I really wanted to do was give you a weird inner version of myself being that on the outside you see, you know, the sparkles and the glitter and kind of the cool vibe of who I am as a performer, but deep down on the inside when you unzip that and you unmask me, it's just black. Um, and I think that that's kind of weird enough <laughs> just to say, but it just really describes my mental illnesses, I think, um, truthfully, to be honest here. Um, <clears throat> you know, what I struggle with on the inside is just pure darkness sometimes and how, you know, I cope with things. Um, you'll see in my hair and on the side of my sparkly face, um, there's tints of blue which were is actually my favorite color um so i liked to i wanted to incorporate that to sh share that side of me with you guys uh i just i wanted to do something i wanted to give you guys an image purely from the heart and how i was feeling today when i did it my version of the two sides of me rather you get the side that you see on the surface and then what is underneath Pretty cold outside. Oh God! Oh Jesus! It's so cold! Damn you, latex! Stop shaking once you're rolling. I'm feeling so excited about this competition. Like, I 
think that um, you can only benefit from you know challenging yourself, pushing yourself, stepping outside of your box. So um, although I love box, um, it's also good to step outside of it once in a while. <laughs> up with my Conquistador Club Kid look, aka Don Queer Hoti. Um, I did a lot of the styling and construction by myself. I built these facial hair pieces on my own. I did the details on the hat. I did the trim on the corset. I made the bloomers from scratch without a pattern. And um, the reason that I wanted to come up with a look like this is because we live in a time when our civil rights as queer people are under attack. So I wanted to do something that sort of speaks to the power of drag in terms of fighting the good fight. You know, being visible, being openly queer, being proud to be who I am, and sort of being a champion for queer rights. Hi, I'm Hugo Girl. I'm here with my boyfriend Joe, and we're shooting my challenge video for episode two of Kingly Rides with Drag King. I was so excited for this challenge, so as you know, it was the Make It Weird uh, Do It Club Could Look photo shoot. I am so inspired by that movement and the fashion and the ethos, like be yourself, be ugly, be queer, be bright, be scary and unnerving and otherworldly and be crass and rude and um, live your fantasy, you know, be, be something else for the night. The shoot itself was particularly inspired by Lee Bowery, my, my babe, uh, body positive, genderqueer, fashion genius, and particularly he has this one shoot where he's uh, a, like a birthday cake and the, the colour and like the candle melting, it's very surreal, it's very clever. That I would say is my number one influence for what we did today. So, despite the fact that I adore the club kid culture, it probably doesn't come as a huge surprise to know that the fashion itself is not my usual look. Usually I'm very much like, oh, let's dress up like a little vintage sailor and go do a cabaret. So this was an opportunity to really challenge myself and do something like quite loud and out there and um, get creepy, get weird. I liked it. I freaked out my flatmates. The challenge was to create something that was recognizably Hugo, but also recognizably Club Kid. So like, Scary little man, but at a hedonistic rave. So this is what we came up with. Drum roll, please. Hosting the children's birthday party of your night is Hugo the Hoary Clown. All right, so let's take you through it. We have platform sneakers for the 90s street fashion. Uh, nasty, nasty nails. I'm actually very proud of these. I made these. Uh, and torn up fishnets for grunge punk. Uh, then we've got Hugo's pretty usual vaudeville spandex clown realness in this jumpsuit. And oh yeah, no, no button, no button. Because as far as I can tell, that is an essential component of being a club kid. I can find any images of like people out of the Jackson James with their derriers covered. So there you go, you can blame me for this atrocity. Paired with some glittery, messy, glungy, clashing. Ugly ass clown makeup. 
done. Look, complete. So thank you so much. We had an amazing shoot day. This outfit is is, is insane. It is it is scary and I love it and I will definitely be wearing it again. Honestly, for a lot of today, I was totally out of my comfort zone, but it was great. It was challenging. It was creepy. I liked sort of getting into this demonic persona. I hope you love the pictures. We had a great time making them. I cannot wait to see what everyone else is coming up with. I don't think I'll ever take these nails off. All right, I'm going to have a beer and a lie down. From the ice in the world, toodaloo, darlings. Time for me and Joe to have some alone time. So how do you like my look? Is it good? Hello, hello, hello! He's Clark. <laughs> Though it's not really Clark. It's, um, I don't know, something fluffy, pink and gorgeous. How do you like my look? I hope you like it because I love it. It's, I love it. It's great. And look at this. I mean, colors such as great and yeah um, am I happy very happy though I could um, perform better on the execution of this wonderful haute couture um, but since I had a little accident <clears throat> and less time and I will go tomorrow to the hospital and get it fixed um, I just couldn't do it better I hoped I wished I could but this didn't work. And I have to say I'm really bad at handcrafting. It's like, oh my god. <laughs> but yeah, it's 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 amazing, isn't it? Um yeah. How do I feel about this competition? I'm still super excited. It's great, it's like it's such an honor to be in this competition and compete with the with all the great performers and um, artists. I mean, every single person, every single boy in this competition is just great. Um, so I feel a little small <laughs> and a little less confident, maybe, because um, uh, I don't do drag for long now, like. I started uh, Instagram um, last year um, because I was feeling I need to do something with this inner Clark in me and um, yeah I was like well, why not, why not Instagram and ending in this competition um, just a half year later is just great. Uh, I even can't put it into words and describe my feelings just feels awesome and I uh, having so much fun and um, yeah I mean it just pushes me um, to go beyond my um, beyond me <laughs> I mean I wouldn't I wouldn't go all out like this maybe not much really. um, yeah so um, I really hope um, I can make it I can make it like how do you say um, I just want to stay as long as possible in this competition. Uh, I want to show that even if you haven't that much experience on stage, um, even if you don't perform um, for like years as my um, colleagues on this competition, um, I believe um, you can do it. Yeah, you just can do it, grab. Some things, grab some makeup, and yeah, and be yourself, kind of, yeah. Um, yeah, and the other thing is like, um, yeah, I'm from Germany, so <laughs> the language thing is such kind of thing, 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 thing for me. Um, it's really hard uh, to express myself, maybe in English. So I hope you get what I feel and get um, my desire for this uh, project uh, yeah and I just can improve and show you um, yeah I yeah I deserve it I think I deserve it and I want to prove you that I should be in this competition
I'm serving diversity. We all come in different colors and shapes. My look is dedicated to Megumi Igarashi, alias Rokude Nashiko, who was arrested for her art. Go and check out her work, she's great. My look is inspired by Peaches, who is my personal hero since I was a teenager. I love her energy and creativity. I believe femininity and masculinity are two extremes and life or human being is something in between. We all can be both, super male and super female, and sometimes at the same time. So don't be afraid to show both sides of you and celebrate life. Oh, so you're weak or I am, your dad will bother. Reading into it, I probably won't. Left to my own devices, but that's the difference in our opinions. You're a mouthful, glad a mouthful. Another week on my own Now I'm a novel Made resourceful I start a chain with my thought Talk is cheap, my darling When you're feeling right at home I wanna make oh you Is my beard still there? You can't talk, you know, like Uh oh, uh oh Okay, well, that's why Clark doesn't talk that much, right? He's like more of a silent guy, you know? Sometimes less is more, but today I decided more is more. I really hope you enjoyed my look. I really hope um, I can show you more of me, of what I can, of what I'm able to do. And uh, yeah, stay gorgeous, stay unique, stay beautiful and enjoy life. Bye-bye. Ah, you know, like, ooh. This is how much I love drag. I am up at 7 o'clock to do a photo shoot for this challenge. I'm not a morning person. This is Rhett. Um, this is challenge two, get your weird on, uh, or let's get weird. Club kid challenge. I went for club kid. So the producers asked us to send in a little video about what our inspiration was for this look. Um, well, for one, obviously, some ice cream. Love me some ice cream, but um, overall, uh, it was actually Sailor Moon, <laughs> my favorite show. Um, the villains on that show are always so fabulous, um, usually very pale faced, and um, inanimate objects that have been brought to life and um, personified. And that's kind of what I tried to do here. Um, you'll see my big ass cone and my. Ice creams that look a little bit like boobies. Um, just enough, just like a here. And this gorgeous face, which was actually inspired by um, club kid Ryan Burke, um, who's uh, really inspiring, especially when it comes to makeup. Uh, if you don't know who they are, look them up for sure, because uh, you will see looks kind of like this, but like on a whole nother level uh, to a different degree. 
Um, it's absolutely incredible. I also took a lot of inspiration from um, pastel goths. Uh, I wanted it to be a little creepy, um, a little scary, but also um, kid-friendly looking. Like, you know, the pastel colors, the ice cream, the whole tone of it, um, but then just a little, just a little creepy. Because <laughs> that's kind of me. Um, a little raunchy, a little over the top, <laughs> a little too much. Uh, that's kind of how I would describe myself. <laughs> Sweater eye inspiration is normally. Um, so day to day, to day uh, could be just about anything. I'm pretty up and down in terms of my entire life. <laughs> um, but for drag, I would say I draw a lot of inspiration from Elton John, Tom Jones, um, David Bowie, just a little bit of everything all mixed into one. <laughs> uh, I also have a heavy rock background, so uh, you see some, some, you see me slip in some like ACDC and things along those lines uh, that are near and dear to my heart. So uh, I definitely am across the board when it comes to inspirations, uh, which is why my drag is pretty all over the place. But I know, my character is, is pretty well defined as that like raunchy, sleazy, um, definitely the attitude of a 70s porn star. Uh, <laughs> there's still a little cupcake in there too. <laughs> so that's about it. And I hope you like the photos. I worked really hard on this. Um, I've been working on this since the challenge came out about two weeks ago or a week and a half ago been a labor of love. I've had a few community members who have given me some guidance. Um, I was photographed by the fantastic Brad Jones. Um, I know that you're going to love what they've done with the photos and I'm so excited to see them. That's all I got. But I love you guys and I'm so glad that people are watching this and that we're getting a platform for Drag King. You know, it's got to start somewhere and like, wow. <laughs> I hope you all liked it. for a few hours and uh, not stopping anytime soon because I'm gonna head out for a drink just like this because I like to terrify people hey I'm Mr. Ace Phoenix from Pittsburgh Pennsylvania it, my costume was partially inspired by uh, Ryan Burke I loved that he would just create these gorgeous kind of like sculptures on people. Uh, I was also inspired by the drag queen Milk, um, who has fantastic beards. Just fantastic beards. Just fantastic. I also wanted to go with a kind of totally different approach because originally I'm thinking like Ace Phoenix, oh I could do so many weird costumes with this. And then I was like, well... The fireball should just go play in water for a little bit. So let's get weird. I have a weird obsession with rubber ducks that also partially inspired this costume because it is not something that Mystery Ace Phoenix would typically, typically do to play with rubber ducks in water on stage. Most of my costumes are more of like a warrior feel or more of a dark creativity. So it was pretty fun to get playful and bubbly <laughs> and um, just kind of roll with it and oh yeah what you have bubbles on your head oh yeah and I have bubbles on my head I'm also partially inspired because from a tattoo that I got so to me ducks are also kind of a symbol of how 
I live life a little bit or like a mentality that I learned about a while back where it is um, act like a duck, remain calm on the top, or paddle like hell underneath. Yeah. Queer youth inspire me to do drag. I grew up in kind of a rough rural area where drag was completely unheard of and as soon as I found about drag it was like a discovery that ignited a fire in me to be able to create and merge with the theater and performance world and it was an outlet to be involved with the community where I felt like I belonged. So I strive to mentor newer drag performers and work with a lot of queer youth around Pittsburgh. And my hopes are to just to leave a positive impact and to give them something to give some to give the queer youth another outlet. I get inspired by other performers as well to see the things that they come up with and to see just the creativity that we all have our own minds and what one person can interpret as one thing somebody else can interpret as something completely different and that's just fascinating. Uh, so costuming was not my strong point in college. It was actually my weakest point whenever I entered the theater world and I would say that it still is but through drag I've also discovered that costuming is not always just co like a cookie cutter costume that you're doing for a show. When you costume for yourself or costume in drag you're working it's with a whole new medium of art where there are things that you're going to learn and it constantly develops and as you come across those challenges, then it's going to turn you, that your vision might change slightly, so it's, it's just become a new art. Splish splash, I was taking a bath, long about a Saturday night, yeah. Rubbed up, just relaxing in the tub, thinking everything was alright. Well, I stepped out the tub, put my feet on the floor. I wrapped the towel around me and I opened the door And in a splish splash, I jumped back in the bath Well, I was out and know there was a party going on Hello darlings, you have tuned in to King Sammy Silver serving sass, sex and surrealness, the non-binary badass bear cub. And today we are doing challenge two of King Me, Rise of a Drag King. Let's get weird. Now in a second I'm going to start putting on my face and uh, I'll do some chatting through it. I may speed up the process because it may take a while and that could be boring for you guys just to watch me put shit on my face. Huh. Before I uh, get crack a I'll just answer a few questions that were given to us. So who am I inspired by? Well, I think I said it in my audition video, but I really like Michael Jackson and Freddie Mercury. Those two guys are like, I've put them on a pedestal and I'm like, I just love the way they perform in terms of their mannerisms, the way they take to the stage and they, they were very charismatic and it's a shame they are no longer with us. Very, very sad. However, their legacies live on, absolutely. So because a lot of people name me as a comedy king, which I don't know why because I'm a very, very serious person. Hey, what's the difference between jam and marmalade? You can't marmalade a cock up your ass. Ah. Very serious person. My look is going with the whole clown, court jester kind of thing. I did a Google image search of uh, club kids and there was like a lot of makeup that looked quite clowny. Like there was the white face and they had like colourful shit coming off their eye and whatever so that's that's what we're gonna go for i'm probably gonna look a hot mess but we are just going to embrace that mess with mess comes finesse that's me trying to be clever okay just could you applaud me at least you know i need i need my ego straight away here anyway stop your jabbing sammy let's get cracking on with this challenge <laughs> well hey what's up this photo shoot thing is really just me myself and i trying to get some good shots the lighting isn't great in here, but we're gonna work around it and we're gonna we're gonna figure something out. It's all gonna be good. This is quite a new thing for me, so it's great that I'm doing different things as a drag king. Sammy, you look like the Fresh Prince just had a bad run in with the Joker. God damn it, Sally, no one asked for your opinion. Sorry about that. I'm gonna go get some photos. Let's hope they're good. <sighs> I pulled up to the house 
was about seven or eight And I yelled to the cabbie, yo home, smell you later Looked at my kingdom, I was finally there To sit on my throne at the Prince of L.A. Rolling. Hello, hello everyone. How are you? It's Trey Alize. We're getting ready to do our uh, challenge two, which is your inner weird or slash party monster, whichever one you want. So this one, I had to come out of my shell for everyone to know. Trey doesn't get to play with the weird very often. Maybe the dorky, maybe the slightly humorous, at least to me, but not the weird. So this is what you'll get. I'm actually combining what our first email said, which was create your own inner club kid, which to me, after watching the documentary behind the actual club kids and the whole Party Monster movie, really just told me how to be myself and not afraid what that might be, what it might show, what it might do, all of the above. So this is what I'm doing. You can see I've already got a prompt involved. We're getting an accent now that I'm a dapper gentleman, you know, keeping it together. Um, actually, this is just me. I love to uh, try to go beyond a box. So this is me going out of the box and combining my love of Disney movies, particularly those ones under the sea. So I hope you enjoy. And away we'll go. girly boys sorry it's been a crazy night as you can see I still look like I got beat up as post uh, challenge two shoot but this is to give a quick uh, shout out to my inspirations which we were asked to do for this challenge um, as far as drag I literally draw inspiration from so many people but every time I step on a stage with other entertainers I draw inspiration but my biggest ones through over time would have to be one my drag dad D love Savion who probably owns every crown I can imagine around these parts but one because he started out as one thing in his very early time and now almost 20 plus years later he's evolving into doing things like mr. freeze and other things pushing his boundaries but he doesn't have anything else to prove but he's still doing it for proving it to himself the other ones not to like butter up or kiss some butt but honestly spiky van dyke i remember being a little tiny lesbian in pensacola stumbling upon your show out out pride and just being amazed at the things that you were doing and it was something that blew me away and then my last would have to be land insider i quit drag several times here in Nashville um, for passion purposes honestly and for life but I just lost what I wanted to do with it and I lost my passion and my drive but then I stumbled upon Land Insider and I saw that there's a whole other world that I hadn't even experienced and it made me want to push myself at 10 years in made me want to do things that are different hence to why I put my audition tape in for Kimi and look here I am trying to be my inner weird and then having to do a show right afterwards and be blue-eyed and sexy is no limit Usher. So yes, so those are my inspirations, but honestly, I draw inspiration for everybody and I would think every entertainer that does drag and has the brazen and balls to put it on and go on a stage and be subject to all of the lovely criticism that we get day in and day out. Thank you because you are the reason I continue to do this and I continue to grow. It's Trey Alize. Peace, love, and drag. Love you all. Bye. Hey everybody, Ronnie Jumpers here. Um, well, bottom three. I have some excuses, but 
no one gives a shit, so I gotta really knock it out of the park on this one. Well, this week's challenge is a club kid look, and I'm intrigued by it. It's something that I'm not too sure about because generally the club kid look is all about being incredibly loud and incredibly uh, visible at all times and generally not really what Roddy as a character is about. So it took a bit of mental gymnastics for me to find a way for it to be a club kid look but a Roddy club kid look. Um, and what I came up with in the end was a sort of a uh, Regency era male because I figured that's the most uh, dandyish, the most foppish, and the most roddyish, really, uh, of the historical male fashions. And I figured just doing that on its own wouldn't be too great, uh, wouldn't be too interesting anyway. So I've got a plan um, to make the costume a bit more interesting. Not entirely sure how it's going to go, but we will see. Uh, I've been shopping, and with the help of Horace, my lovely wig head, Sid, who is here for moral support, he's a plant, but we love him anyway, and the bags and bags of stuff. We might be able to make a club kid look. The inspirations for my Club Kid look are many and varied. Um, mainly, I'm drawing from the costumes of Blackadder the Third, particularly the actor characters, and uh, also a little bit of, well, hopefully anyway, a little bit of David Bowie in the Labyrinth, and maybe just a dash of early years Elton John. Step one involves bleach. That is a pint of warm water, some washing fabric detergent type stuff, and a ton of bleach. This is a shirt I got from a charity shop. Here it is with some more bleach on it. Soak shirt. Soak. As with most things, I've kind of half planned, but not planned to any great detail in case the plan goes wrong. Mm. See, that's my strategy, is if you plan too much and then things don't go according to plan, you can't quickly switch to backup plan. Whereas if you kind of half plan, then you're already thinking of the backup plan, so that's that's how you, how you do that. So I've got here just a standard um, party shop type wig. It's not the best wig, but it will do. And I've got here some fabric that I found in a, I think it's an attic clearance shop or something, uh, which is sort of like old carpet samples or curtain samples or something. The idea is, don't know how well this is going to work, the idea is that this is going to get somehow mounted on this hoop and the hoop is going to be incorporated into the wig so that it looks like the wig has been swept up around the picture. Like I said, not entirely sure how well that's going to work out, but we'll see. It's now night time. Mm. Um, I have been doing some stuff. Let me show you the stuff. This is what we've got of the wig so far. Obviously, I'm going to get another hairpiece to cover up the styrofoam. Um, I'm just using some of the biggest, ugliest rings I could find to uh, go around the hairline just because I thought it looked cool i'm gonna do more stuff and i think i'm gonna try and find a way to work more material through it so that it's not just here so that it's like um, down the sides as well and this is what's gonna go on the back this is just a hair clip that i've covered in some fabric paint uh because it gives it a nice sort of balloony kind of effect and then it's gonna clip there then we've got a shirt collar that i found in a charity shop this is like the old-fashioned when the shirt collars were separate to the shirts and it's been starched and everything and I'm just uh, gluing to that because I don't want to sew to it and ruin it um, some various kinds of lace the idea is that this will be worn without a shirt basically um, so that's going to be open shirted and I thought that would look quite cool been doing rather a lot of sewing and rather a lot more to go 
Um, still not entirely sure how it's all going to come together. The sound you can hear is the bleached things going around the washing machine. We'll see what happens with them. And uh, more on this story as it develops. I could not sleep. Um, so I got up and started doing work. <laughs> it's like 7.30 on a Saturday and I've been up for the last like 45 minutes because I just couldn't lie in. Um, so yeah, I've been doing some work on stuff. Let me show you what I've done. These are going to be my stockings, except they're not going to be white. They might be, I don't know, but this is what I've done to the shirt, so yeah, they're probably not going to be white. Now I just need to cover the front of the shirt like that, and the trousers, and the stockings. So yeah manageable everyday look really so i have my bind on i've got the shirt on and now it's time to do the makeup um the first part of doing makeup is gonna be fun because it requires mixing some foundation with some white face paint which is a halloween trick i picked up um which basically means that rather than just being face paint white you're like a pale person colour. Uh, so I'm just going to use the bent nasty old end of my comb to prise out some face paint from the face paint container. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Sarah is helping me. She is my wonderful glamorous assistant. Good. That's us. Now I have to get into costume and you'll see the photos in a moment. These contestants really did their best job to dig deep down and show us their inner weird. Some of these guys really stepped outside of their box, and we really appreciate that. Now it's time to deliberate with our judges. Yo, bro! Nothing but the ocean. Can I type the phone? Not gonna do it, dude. Perfect! So we deliberated a little bit, and guess who's back to join us this week? Vincent Von Dyke! Hey! Vincent happens to be the producer of this show, King Me, Rise of a Drag King. So I want to ask Vincent a couple questions. Vincent, how do you feel the show is going so far? I think it's really awesome. The contestants are really showing us some awesome stuff, and they're stepping outside their boxes. And this whole competition, we're going to challenge them to do that. Yeah. 
I think this show's going great. I'm really excited to see what these contestants bring, and each challenge is going to push them to step outside their box, because they're all so different. That's why it's so hard to judge them, and I'm really excited to see the stuff that they bring each week. You talk a lot about boxes. <laughs> I like boxes. <laughs> but I'm asking you to step outside of your box, not inside. So you can step outside. outside. So I can get in your box, you step out. <laughs> I don't like boxes. I lie. Okay. <laughs> Vincent, tell us what inspired you to make King Me Rise of a Drag King. I really just want a platform for kings because there's so many queens out there, but there's also so many kings, and we need to show that the kings work just as hard as the queens and they can do this. And so, with that being said, that's what inspired me. I wanted to give us a platform and to show the world that they're talented as well. So when you created King Me, Rise of a Drag King, did you anticipate to have such involvement from across the entire world? I didn't anticipate this much reaction because I'd never seen kings. Like, I didn't know kings existed in China or kings existed in Australia. When the contestants did audition from all around the world, I was shocked to see that they were from so many different countries. And it's really awesome that there's that much draw for drag kings. All right, let's do it. Poppy Churro. Honestly, I think Poppy turned it out this week. He was in the bottom last week, and I really think that he came and, and really stepped it up this week, and kudos for that, because he's given me club kid realness that it, exactly what I really liked. Although, although, I have to say this, um, there was still some video issues that we had in the instructions with some things that he sent in, but I'll, with his look, his look was great. Yeah, I really like the look, the face. From the neck up, this look is really great. Yeah. Um, I mean, just, it's fabulous. It's weird. It's exactly what we asked for. You think creature of the night, but I don't understand the outfit completely with it all. And, like, the fingers. You clearly have on these plastic fingertips. It would have been really cool if you could have found a way to paint maybe those down into your flesh to make it not look like you stuck some plastic fingertips on the end of your finger. Really bring that creature to life. Don't just piece it together with what you find lying around in your drag room. But again, his look, the face was what I was looking for was weird. Show me your weird. Yeah. It was on point with that. Next we have Robbie Jodford. First off, I will say that the, the very first picture in his portfolio is my favorite. Um, you can't really see all that he has going on up close. It's pretty artistic, the way that it's taken. Uh, him getting ready uh, with the teapot thing in the background. I don't know if that's intentional, but it's kind of neat, this first one. And I was kind of excited to see this from the front and from the back as we progressed into his picture images. But the more we got into the pictures, the scene was just his hallway, you know, the outfit doesn't really flow with the makeup choice, um, the back of the jacket is extremely sloppy, the appliques that he's using on his face are not attached well, they're sticking off, and uh, in addition to that, like, of this picture of his face, like, one of his eyebrows isn't even on, it, it was almost too much clutter. Yeah, I feel like he went and bought a whole bunch of stuff and he he found some way to put it all on one outfit when it wasn't necessarily needed on the outfit. Right. My favorite part about this entire piece that he did is his hair. Yeah, I, I really like the century that he was going for or like, like with the... No, I do too. I feel like I wish that he would... So this thing that's going on in the top the center, the... The picture that he has going on in the top center of his hairpiece, I wish that he would have based his outfit and his makeup more directly similar to that and kind of made that just would have overall given you that more finely polished look that we are really seeking in our next or our first drag king superstar. Yeah, and I feel like he, compared to the other ones, they most of them set a scene, and he didn't. But he would definitely have to be one of my bottom three for this week. All right, so then the next person that I have here is Christian Gay. So Christian Gay, 
Um, I'm not. I'm not really impressed with this this week's challenge. I feel like there wasn't a lot of thought put into it. At least the the overall appearance of it um, and the, the zipper, like some of the makeup on the zipper face, like at some of the angles, you can see the black where it should be silver. Uh, the silver doesn't go down to the chest. It doesn't go up into the hair. Like it just, if you're showing like that unzip a different personality, I just don't feel like the two sides that he was going for here are, are really strong. Either one of them actually. I really like where he was going. I just don't think he executed it the way that he could have. So the next one I have is NSFW. What did you feel about that? Um, honestly, like, he followed instructions to a T of everything that we asked him for this week as far as video, as far as submissions, and he gave us a really cohesive piece, and it was clean, and he did the video, it was really nice, he set the scene and everything, and I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I feel like, you know, he did put it together very well, um, and his pictures are great. Mm -hmm. I love those. And here's the other thing is that he did eyelashes as well, but it doesn't look as feminine on him as it did on some of the other contestants. So I like that. I like the fact that you can still do your eyelashes, but it doesn't scream too much femininity at me. Again, considering this is a drag king contest. And, and it's how he wore it and how he shaped his eyes that maybe pulled off more masculine vibe. Rhett Swetler, and he did the ice cream look. Um, I okay. loved it. No, I loved it. I, it was really cool. I loved the top half. The bottom half, I kind of got lost, and I get where he was trying to do it, but I didn't like it. I, but I really loved the top half and, and the melting ice cream cone and the mustache with the sprinkles. I really like the concept he was going for. But the bottom half, I... It, just wasn't doing it for me. There was something that was missing. Well, here's here's my opinion um, on that. But the bottom half for me, this is what did it. Your pants and your boots stand out from each other, and then you have this ice cream cone on your front. But you never took a picture front facing where the cone showed, and then you in the cone as if you were the ice cream. Other than that, the makeup was on point, and I loved the concept. Yeah, I like the sprinkle mustache. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, the next one that we have here is Sammy Silver. Oh, Sammy, 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 Sammy. I was disappointed in Sammy this week because Sammy, I, I really like Sammy's uh, character that he has to bring to this competition. But he really... He didn't do it for me. Like, in comparison to everyone else, he, he just wasn't weird enough for me. And the makeup wasn't executed well, and the outfit wasn't executed to what I... It just, in comparative, he didn't... He didn't live up to this challenge. It was too simple. Yeah, it was just... I mean, it was far too simple. Like, I feel like he just picked out a pair of pants, went to a costume shop, bought a jester jacket, and then painted his face kind of basic, threw on a ball cap, and called it a day. Sammy has so much potential, and I don't feel like he's really shown us all that he has to offer. I feel like he's definitely holding himself back from being everything that he could be, and I really want to see him let go and go over the top. Um, you know, whereas I said, Roddy was a little too much, too much clutter, and he needed to fine tune it a little bit. This is the opposite extreme. This is way too basic. Um, I did get his concept. I did like where he was going with it, but again, the execution just wasn't there for me. Yeah, it wasn't there for me either. Sammy, step it up. Step it up. Next we have uh, Hugo Girl. Oh, I loved it. Absolutely. Hugo Girl, he set the scene. He His pictures portrayed the scene that he was trying to set. He, he set a character, and the character fit in the scene and fit the pictures and the poses, and it all just went very cohesive. And he, as well, followed instructions to a T of what we asked for the videos this week, and I really liked that. 
it showed polished Correct. professionalism for me. Yeah, for me, the background matched the outfit, matched the character, matched the facial expressions, matched everything. This is exactly what I want to see in this competition. Um, it's amazingly done. Uh, it's very hard to critique. Now, granted, the male bulge on this one is also very good. So that looks great. Um, <laughs> great, great bulge, yeah, Hugo. <laughs> I think by far was one of my favorite pieces. Yeah, it was my top three, definitely. All right, and then our very last one here is Trey Alizé. So Trey did straight out of the fishbowl. Um, I'll start off by saying I do think that this was a really clever concept. Um, he did execute it fully. His backgrounds look like he's in a fish tank or has stepped out of a fish tank. Every single scene that he set was in that scene. Uh, it was actually the full image, the full, it was the full concept that we were looking for. So that was really cool to see. Um, his character was pretty neat. I definitely enjoyed it. My biggest concern about this look is that in some of his up-close images of this character, he takes off his top hat or his hat. He takes off his headpiece. When he takes off his headpiece, his hair is completely dry. There is nobody who would step out of a fish tank with completely dry hair. Right. You know what I love about this, so, though, is, is this is not Trey's forte at all. No, this was definitely outside the box for Trey. Um, and, you know, he did bring us a lot of different aspects to his character, like with the anchor over his shoulder and, you know, the moth next to his feet. So many props. And the, he brought so many props. It was awesome. Even though he brought a lot of props and he used a lot of different things to execute his look, it was still simple and cohesive enough that it wasn't too busy. And I really appreciate that. I really like that he did a whole photo spread. And, and that wasn't a requirement, but he did a whole spread to tell the whole story. And I really enjoyed that. He really did, um, and he stayed in character in every photo, um, and this is this is definitely a really cool side of Trey Alizé. Yep. Uh, I would definitely have to say Trey is in my top three this week. Me too. I, I chose Trey as my top three. Okay, so the judges have deliberated, and now it's time to make some announcements. First off, let's list our top three. This week's top three contestants are... Hugo Girl, NSF. Trey Alizé, NSFW. This week's challenge winner is Hugo Girl. His prize comes all the way from Los Angeles, California, from a sickening entertainer, Valentin Anger. Valentin is the co-founder of Downtown LA's ATM, Art, Talent, Music. He is creating custom hair and pants for this week's challenge winner. Congratulations, Hugo Girl. And unfortunately, we do have to announce a bottom three. This week, our bottom three contestants are Roddy Joffers, Christian Gay, Sammy Silver, and luckily, Sammy Silver. You are safe this week. But I really need you to step up your game and pay attention to the judges' critiques so that this doesn't happen to you again next week. And now it's time to announce who's going home. Of the bottom two, Roddy Joffers. We'd love for you to stay, but you really must dash. This means that, Christian Gay, you are also safe this week. But we need to see more from you. It's time to step it up, really branch out, and show us the best drag that you have. So next week's challenge is going to be Trashy Couture. We need you to find your best trash and or recycled items Put it together and give us your best fashion show. No clothing permitted. All items must be created from trash or recyclable items. Please, don't use the dirty trash. You know what we mean. Alright, and that concludes episode 2 of King Me, A Rise of a Drag King. So, join us next week for Trashy Couture. In the meantime, you can follow us on the link down there. It's like Instagram, Facebook, Vincent in the Bathroom. You pick, but pay attention. So make sure you subscribe. And tune in next time. Our episode will air the week of March 6th.
So thanks for watching King Me, Rise of the Dragon King. And in the meantime, get your drag on.